Hello everyone, I am Narc Survivor. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Before I begin, please hit that thumbs up button down below to show your support. If you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, you can go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. Why Narcissists Ruin Intimate Moments It's no secret that narcissists love to ruin intimate moments. They love to ruin anything that might otherwise bring you fulfillment. A personal experience, a vacation, a birthday, Christmas, Valentine's Day, or some other special occasion or event. But why do they do this? What is their motivation? That is what we're going to get into in this video. Intimate moments are personal and private. It's a moment where you may share your intimate thoughts and feelings, your intimate secrets or an intimate conversation. And this could be a moment that you are having with the narcissist, or it could be something that you are sharing with someone else. Where you're having, or it's likely to cause a very close friendship, or personal or sexual relationship, where you know someone and you like them a lot, and you're involved with each other in a loving and sexual way. You're not flaunting or broadcasting it in the way that narcissists do with their sources of supply in a deliberate and vicious attempt to make someone envious or jealous. It's very personal and private. But of course, when you're intimately involved with someone, there is always the risk of other people finding out about it. Where they then acquire certain information that was not previously known. But this was never your intention. You didn't intend to agitate anyone or to provoke a certain response. Your intention was to get to know someone and to share an intimate encounter. A close and warm personal relationship with a partner or friend. And there's nothing legally or morally wrong with that. As long as you're not being unfaithful or using the intimate or sexual act to harm or deprave the partner involved. But of course, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about an innocent interaction where you have no knowledge of the unpleasant or evil things in life. So you're not intending to harm anyone. But yet, this seems to be a sore spot for narcissists. It's an issue which causes them distress and annoyance. And it's something that they prefer not to talk about because it makes them angry and embarrassed. But a lot of times, narcissists really don't even believe that there is such a thing as an innocent interaction or an intimate moment. In their minds, everything is corrupt and immoral and people are just getting over on each other because that's just how they think and act. And they project their ideas and experiences onto other people. So they don't believe that there can be another way because they're in denial. They've shut themselves off from this world of true love and intimacy. And it's because a long time ago they felt rejected by someone. And they never received the love and appreciation that they desired and needed. So they told themselves a story in their minds. That everyone is fake and manipulative. And that there is no such thing as an intimate moment. And instead, they're just trying to gain power and control over you or another person. But deep down, they do know the truth. They understand that people can experience intimacy together. But for some reason, they are excluded from that experience. As though they're unworthy or unlovable. When in fact, the real reason is because of their ego. Their need to feel superior and important. That's what prevents them from experiencing true intimacy with anyone. They are the problem. But because they were rejected a long time ago and they felt unlovable, they can't even see it. Because the reality is that many people have tried to love the narcissist, but the narcissist won't let them. They can't be vulnerable. 
And because of that, they will mock you and ridicule you when you're vulnerable and authentic, as though it's a weakness. When really it takes strength and courage, which are two things they don't have. So they actually envy your ability to be vulnerable and intimate, which is why they will do anything they can to take it away or destroy it. Because they can't comprehend how you're able to open up and be vulnerable when they could never find the strength to do that because they were rejected a long time ago and it made them feel inadequate or as though something is wrong with them. So when a narcissist is sharing an intimate moment with you or they're aware that you're sharing an intimate moment with someone else, they will try to ruin it because it reminds them of a time in their life where they felt unlovable and rejected and they can't find the strength to overcome it. So they have to use people and situations in an attempt to regulate themselves by lowering the vibration so that it resonates with their internal condition and past experiences. Which is why you cannot be in the vibration of love around a narcissist. They will sense it and they will immediately try to bring it down because they can't exist on that frequency. They have too much fear, guilt, anger, shame and pride. And when they see your love, it triggers these emotions and causes them to resurface to where it becomes too overwhelming for them to deal with. And then they have to lash out at you. They have to cause some form of disruption or disorder because when everything is aligned in perfect harmony, it causes them to have to reflect on their internal condition and it makes them feel worthless. When everything is clean and pure, it just reminds them of how foul, immoral and corrupt they are on the inside. So they can't feel what you feel. To them, it feels like an attack. It makes them feel like they're garbage in contrast to this moment that you're experiencing. Because in this moment, they're idealizing you. They're viewing you as perfect. As though you're effortlessly presenting this clean, angelic image and they're closely observing your lifestyle as they're examining your clothes, makeup, accessories and how you take care of yourself and it's overwhelming to them. Aside from the cost, it's like how do you even have the time, energy and motivation to do all of that? And then they're questioning if it's your genetics and then that makes them feel inadequate as well. It makes them feel dirty, ugly and inferior in comparison. It's too overwhelming for them to have to imagine the work that it would take for them to achieve anything like that. And then they look at themselves, their upbringing and appearance, and they feel they could never measure up to you because they've idealized you. They have viewed you as, as perfect until they realize that your qualities can never be theirs. And then they begin to hate and resent you. This is why many narcissists strive to achieve this picture perfect image themselves because they've witnessed it on social media or television or they may have just imagined it in their heads and assigned it to you or someone else. And what they envy is typically what they strive to become while simultaneously trying to destroy it in the process. Because you can't both be that. It's either you or it's them and they are determined to be that because they hate themselves and they hate anyone who proves to be something they're not. They despise their own humanity, bodily processes and functions. They hate being vulnerable. They hate being reminded that they are human. They take that as an insult on their character. Because in their minds, you're either perfect or flawed. So they have to manipulate, devalue, belittle and exploit you to see themselves as perfect. When the reality is that no one is perfect, we all make faults and mistakes. We all have flaws and imperfections, whether they see it or not. The problem is that they idealized you. They projected this perfect self-image onto you and your experiences until they realize that it's you and not them and then they begin to envy you 
until they then become aware of your insecurities, imperfections and vulnerabilities because they're fault finding. They're looking for something to be wrong so that they can tarnish your self image. So they will pinpoint something that they believe to be wrong and then they will exaggerate it as though it's the most important thing in the world so that you become hyper focused on it and you give it your full attention until you lose track of everything else going on around you because you're completely absorbed in what they're displaying to you. You're trying to help them. You're trying to solve the issue. But even if you do change this alleged flaw about yourself, they will move the goalposts and they will find something else to belittle you about. Because they're implying that there's a problem with you when there's actually no problem at all. It's just an expression of their own self-hatred, which they are performing vicariously through you. Because they feel like they're this ugly duckling who no one cares about, and you're this beautiful swan who everyone loves and admires, even though you may not see it that way. And they may be attractive themselves. And they may have more opportunities and friends than you do. Because this is all going on in their minds. And when they're training you to become hyper-focused on your flaws or weaknesses, it's because they're already hyper-focused on you. To the point where they've lost track of everything else going on around them. And it's a lonely experience for them. Unless you're along for the ride. So they've got to pull you into it. By pointing out your flaws. Because otherwise they're just going to be obsessively watching and observing everything you do. Or they may even be visualising certain scenarios in their heads. And you may just be eating a meal or brushing your teeth. And they will stare at you intensely. But you may not even realise what is going on. They will just randomly insult you. Because all of this is going on in their minds while you're innocently going about your day and they see you performing simple daily activities and it's making them sick because it reminds them of their own inadequacy and imperfections and of how they're never going to be like you or experience life in the way that you do. But this is not love or an acceptance of who you actually are as a person. They're idealizing you. They're viewing you as this perfect, innocent, angelic character, which is everything that they strive to be but failed. And you may never have viewed yourself in this way, but this is exactly how they see you. And it's why they just can't get enough of you. And they become obsessed. And there's no limit to the abuse. There's nothing they could do to you to where they would feel like you're even. And you've had enough. And it's because they view you in this way. They have an arrested emotional development. They're stuck with this black and white mentality. Which is typically seen in young children. And people in their qualities are like toys for them to take and use as their own. Your qualities and possessions make them envy you. It makes them want to deprive, deprave, immoralize and corrupt you. To make you look bad and feel bad about yourself. And to get everyone else to see you the same way. Because there is this innocent and angelic side to you. And they despise that about you. It reminds them of how foul and corrupt they are. And that they are not good. Which is why they despise anything cute, playful or innocent. Because they were traumatised at a young age and they lost that side of them. They have no inner child because they didn't have a proper childhood. They were forced to grow up at a young age because their parents may have been the same way. Narcissists despise your intelligence and how you conduct yourself, communicate, and articulate yourself in an autonomous and professional way. They want to discredit you and cause you to lose favour and respect. 
Everything that we might love and appreciate about a person is what they envy and hate about us. Because as empaths, we're innocent and pure. So we behave in a way that is morally good. Without extraneous and unnecessary elements, we're simple and bounded and restricted down right and absolute. So just like an innocent child, we're not naturally subjected to any internal perceived limitations, such as fear of failure, pride, laziness, or the tendency of delaying or postponing something. Instead, we are naturally confident, active, energetic, attentive and modest, because we are innocent and pure, and we are connected to our inner child. So it's natural and real. While they're putting on an act and pretending to be something they're not, So they resent that they had to abandon their true identity to manipulate people and get ahead in life. Which is why they hate your freedom and independence. Because although externally they may feel unconfined and unbound, internally they're chained to their own lies and fabrications, which is essentially a present of their own making. And yet they recognize that your internal condition is unlike theirs because you're innocent. You don't have to manipulate anyone. So they have to confine and contain you by spreading lies and rumors and creating this false narrative about you while at the same time they're living vicariously through you. But the last thing they want is for you to view yourself vicariously through their eyes. Because then you would see what they see. And you would realise that it's very different to how they've been portraying you to yourself or to other people. It's like the movie Cinderella. You're Cinderella. And they're the jealous, undesirable stepmother or stepsisters. They know that you're beautiful. They know that you're meant to naturally outshine them. But they can't stand it. Because it's you and not them. So they hide you from the world. And they create a false reality. They steal your character. While keeping you down and hidden away. And they pile all of these duties and responsibilities onto you. To tire you out and to make you feel miserable. Because it's the opposite of how you naturally are. While for them... It's their natural state, which is why they want to put it onto you and have you deal with it. And when you finally get fed up and you say no more, they go behind your back and they tell everyone about you. They start a smear campaign to prevent you from sharing your wonderful qualities with the world. And it's all because of their emotions. It's because they're envious and jealous. If they had thought logically and rationally, they never would have done those things to you. And you would be the person who you're meant to be. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, You can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.